Are we on? Are we on? Kel, can you hear me? Let's hear you. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> put, it, put it right there. <laughs> All right, we're live, ladies and gentlemen. St. John's Redskins taking on the Valley Pirates tonight from Sanders, Arizona. We're in for a great game. Someone's going to have a great win early on in the season. A little bit off there. By number 24, D'Angelo Spencer overshoots it back down. The Pirates bring it back down. Just getting underway here. Valley Pirates looking to run a little weave out front on this 2-3 zone by St. John's. Air ball over the top by number 24 from the Pirates. That's Kyler Tabaha, the 5'10 senior with the ball. And our, one of our officials, Greg Chavis Jr., taking it out underneath by number 30. That's Treyu Bizzardi, the 5'11 senior, taking it out. Gets it in with a nice pass over the top. Scores. That is number 22. Great shot right there as he goes up and over the top. Makai Yazi, the 5'10 junior, going to the line, looking to complete the three-point play. And that's going to be the first foul on number 24 for the Redskins, D'Angelo Spencer, as Makai looking to take and give this team a 3-0 lead. Kel, great to have you tonight. Great to be here. All right, so he makes it through. Sanders up 3-0 to start early. Mr. Jarvis takes it out, and the Redskins pushing it up. Looks like Sanders is going to be in that man-to-man -man defense as D'Angelo tries to take it up in the lane. Back over at number 21, Afton Cox down there working underneath, setting that nice screen on number 22. Right now with the ball, you're looking at Jordan Mannery kicking it back out to D'Angelo. That's good defense right there by the Valley Pirates, Kel. Yep. And You'd like to see that drive, good drive and kick out, just a little bit rough on that kick out passes. Mr. Jarvis gets called for double dribble by Greg Chavis Jr., one of our officials. Our other officials tonight, our Brian Bra Lane underneath. You see him taking that out? He's got the ball right now. And we also have Scott Baker. And Scott Baker is in the corner right now with Greg Chavis Jr. St. John's putting a little pressure on the ball as we get started here tonight. We'll give you some information on the teams, their schedules, where they're at in this early part of the season. They've both been to a couple tournaments. Gotten a lot more experience. Nice open look there for three from number 24, Tyler Tabaha. Goes a little bit wide. Sanders is going to get it back. Call that out on the Redskins. So taking it out for the Pirates, Trejan Bazzardi, the 5'11 senior. Sanders doing a good job of moving the ball around on that against this 2-3 zone. And that drive underneath right there. Great drive right there by number 12, Joshua Begay. He's the 5'10 junior. He's the lead scorer for the Pirates. He's averaging over 15 points a game. And you can see why with that nice drive, Kel. Yep. And it goes just, just a little bit of a pass there underneath. Uh, number one, that's Jordan Winters with the ball. And, and passing it through uh, D'Angelo's feet right there. Plays like that, you just wish you had back. Right? Just a little bit higher. Nice inbounds pass there. Number 40 for the Pirates. We haven't called his name yet. That's Edmund Whitehorse. He's the tallest player for this Pirate team. He's about six feet tall. So he does a lot underneath, rebounds a lot. And as we call his name, he looks to drive, dishes it off. And wow, a lot of hustle here from these guys to start off. These two teams have actually played each other before. They have played each other at a tournament. Mr. Pink Shoes with the ball. Like those, kicking it back out. It's number 30, tallest player for the Pirates. Boom, and he puts it in. And Sanders takes an 8-0 lead, which is 5.30 to go here in the first period. Nice shot there by Trajan Bazardi. He's guarding Afton Cox down there underneath. And looks like a little bit of a zone man as their two bottom players are staying there and just picking up whoever comes underneath. Like to see that good rotation up top right there. And Jordan Manor with a little bit of an ill-advised shot. But the rebound, and he puts it in. Nice job right there. St. John's is on the board. 8-2, to two, Pirates leading with five minutes to go here in the first period. Number 12 for the Pirates, looking to drive. Dishes it off to number 22, Makai Yazi. And back across to number 12 again, just off on that three-pointer, was Joshua Begay. Jordan Mannery bringing the ball up the floor for the Redskins at the early part of this game. And Jordan Winters trying to take that baseline. Draws the body foul on number 24, that's... Kyler Tabaha, the 5'10 senior for the Pirates. So his first foul of the night. Each team has one team foul. And you can see right there, D'Angelo 
Spencer taking it out underneath, getting over to Jordan Winters and back over to number 21. Jordan Mannery sets that nice screen right there. Haven't seen a lot from Afton Cox tonight. Hoping he gets more involved. Great kid, hard worker, good basketball player. Want to see him get a little more involved. That's a nice floater over the top. Almost gets his own rebound, but it goes out of bounds. And so number 40, Edmund Whitehorse for Pirates takes it out. And bringing it up the floor is number 22. That's Makai Yazi, the 5'10 junior. St. John's putting some nice pressure on the ball. And then they get back into that 2-3 defense. You can see Sanders is keeping people in at least one corner just to keep that defense honest underneath on that three-point shot. So that traveling call turns it back over to St. John's with 4-10 to go here in the first period. Kel, what are you seeing so far that you like that St. John's is doing? Well, I think um, they're doing way better from what I saw in the tournaments because I was there for both the Round, Round Valley and the Blue Ridge tournament. So give us a little... Oh, the, he's going to call that shot off on the floor on that foul right there. Let's see who he calls on. Kellen, I want you to give us a report on the round ball tournament up there in round ball. He's calling on number 22. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be yeah. on number 22 from Valley, a timeout. That's going to be on Makai Yazi, mm -hmm. who is actually their fourth leading scorer. He scores about four points a game. So what would you see at that round ball tournament up there in round Valley mm -hmm. from St. John's, for those of us who didn't make it up there? Um, well, they, they did pretty good. It was a bit... A rough going for them. New team, new coach. Like a lot of their players from last year are gone. I noticed that they're looking at the schedule and talking to Coach Stacy Waite. It sounds like they did beat the Alchese Falcons. I think that was their first one of the season. I know it's a tournament win, but it was their first one of the season. They beat the Alchese Falcons at the Round Valley Tournament 57-44. to I don't know if you happen to see that game. Yeah, well, I was mainly up there, like, with my dad, so I kind of had Oh, he was, was, he, he was the, officiating up there? Yeah, I was hanging oh, right out with on. the officials. That's always fun. All right, Afton Cox. Nice move inside by number five, Afton Cox. Great job there by the six-foot senior for the Redskins as he cuts the lead, halves it up. It's a double up right now. Eight points for Sanders, four for St. John's with 3.37 to go here in the first period. Doing a nice job on that. It's a good move and a good drive right there as well. Uh, Afton Cox, number five, Afton Cox for St. John's. And he gets the rebound right there as we call his name. Oh, and traveling as he goes down four feet on the floor, as we used to say. So turning it back over to the Pirates. Two team fouls on the Pirates, just one on the Redskins. A nice clean game so far. And I was mentioning earlier, these two teams did play each other. That was actually in the Blue Ridge Tournament. They call that the Timber Mesa White Mountain Classic. Were you at that tournament as well, Kel? Yep. Give us a rundown on that. What did you see from uh, either team? Um. Nice still there by Hunter Jarvis, Ryan. number 23. He's the 6'4 senior for the Redskins. And right there, Jordan Winters. Oh, he jumped into That's a nice job drawing the foul. Number 30. Mr. Bazzardi, the 5'11 senior, averaging six points a game, gets in front, plants his feet, sets his position, and draws that charge on number one, Jordan Winters. So that'll be two fouls on each team. That's Jordan Winters' first foul of the game. And St. John's putting on a little bit of pressure as they bring the ball down the court right here. And it looks like St. John's has gone into a man-to-man -man defense. Looks like they're going to shift into a zone man. Nice shot right there over the top. That's going to be a two-point basket for the Pirates. And into the game, in case you didn't notice, number four, Asher Rabin. And he takes a nice shot from the outside. Number four, Asher Rabin with a big three-pointer. Cuts the lead to three. Seven for the Skins. Ten for the Pirates. And number 12, what a beautiful drive right there. Getting the roll, bringing it in. Joshua Begay, the lead scorer. You can see why, like I said earlier, he's averaging almost 16 points a game. Puts them back up by five. Jarvis to Rabin. Rabin drives the lane. Nice little floater. Runner a little bit hard off the glass. Rebound by Kyler Tabaha. Kicking it up to number 22, and it's going to go out of bounds on Asher Rabin. Nice defense regardless right there. Good job. So Brian Lake with the ball. Looks like we're going to have a substitution here. Number 22 is going out. Makai and into the game comes number two. Hayden Etsidi. 
the 5'10 sophomore. He's averaging three points a game. First time we've seen him in here tonight. Looks like he's going to take that three-pointer. Comes in off the bench cold, barely misses it. And we're going to get a foul call, pushing foul. And, and I think that was a good call called by Greg Chavez, Jr. Did he call that a number three? Yeah, he did. He called yeah. that a number three. So number three, Charlie Humphreys, the 6'2", senior for the Redskins, gets a foul. That's his first of the game, third for the team. Another beautiful drive right there. Just comes short off the rim from Joshua Begay. A good rebound by Jordan Mannery as he brings it up the court, kicks it back out to Asher, and he just drags that pivot foot and brings it over so he gets called for traveling. It's a tough call, but it's the right call. Yeah, well, just got that, yeah that's a tough call to like um, see because like, if that pivot foot moves, it's travel. Right. But if it like pivots, then it's not. So that, that's a really tough call and a good one. That ball's got to hit the floor before that second foot comes down. So he gets called for traveling. Sanders up by five. And great keep and bounce play by number 24. And then as you call his name, he takes it around looking to drive. Gets cut off. Jordan Mannery with a nice poke that ball. It almost gets the steal. Playing out there on the lead score for the Pirates. And number 32 into the game, Michael James. He is a senior with a beautiful pass underneath to Kyler Tabaha. And Kyler Tabaha going to get ready to double. He averages a little over five points a game. Looks like he's going to reach that easy in this first half if he keeps it up. He's doing a good job out there tonight. So Asher Raven with the ball up top, looking to set the defense. Riley Green, of course, has come into the game for the Redskins, number 22. He's the one you see out there setting screens. He's a 6'5 senior. Mr. Humphreys with a nice drive, a little bit hard off the glass, doesn't get the foul, and the rebound there by number two, Hayden Etzity, the sophomore for the Pirates. The Pirates doing a good job moving the ball out there on the perimeter, keeping this defense moving a little bit. You can see the Redskins have gone to a man-to-man. -man. No call there. So reset it, no shot clock. Only thing going right now is 16 seconds on the game clock. That's the only thing the Pirates may be playing for is a last-second shot here. Number 30 with a nice drive for the Pirates and kicks it off to number two, Hayden Etzity. And looks like the ball is going to be poked out of bounds, but it's going to stay with the Pirates. With five seconds to go here in the first period, it's a double up. Seven for the Redskins, 14 for the Pirates. Out of the game goes number 12, Joshua Begay, and number two, Hayden Etzity. And, of course, into the game. He's telling, put, he's telling put his mask up or put it down either way. He had it around his neck and didn't want him to get choked on it. So they're looking for a last-second shot. Up it comes, a lot of arch, a little short on the shot there. And the quarter ends. Three team fouls for the Redskins, two team fouls for the Pirates. Nice officiated game so far by Greg Chavis Jr., Scott Baker, and Brian Lake. And the Redskins with seven points, Valley with 14 points as we start this second period. And Kel, give us a rundown on what you saw at the Blue Ridge Tournament. Did St. John's look different? at the Blue Ridge Tournament than what they looked like at the round ball tournament? Well, yeah, what were your I, thoughts there? I think that um, St. John's did a bit better in, Bl in Blue Ridge. They still had their struggles. Okay. Yeah, they had struggles. Were they but, but I can see that they're getting better and better. But Valley S Va Sanders about the Pirates. The Pirates, right? Isn't that funny? I always just call everybody Sanders or Valley, and you can say it all. Valley Sanders Pirates. But, yeah, you got it, the Pirates. Yeah. I, they have control of this game. And look, pretty low on fouls, 3-2. to two. Nice, clean game. And they're doing a good moving the ball around the perimeter. <laughs> Let me give you some numbers here. Um, this first period, Afton Cox has two points. Jordan Mannery has two points. And Asher Raven with that nice three-pointer off the bench. For the Valley Pirates, Kyler Tabaha has two points. Makayazi has three. Joshua Begay has four, and Trajan Bazzardi has five points to lead all scores. So he's doing a great job. He averages six points a game, so he's almost hit his average so far. All right, the Pirates bring it back in. St. John's staying in that man-to-man -man defense. The Pirates have got a lot of smaller, quick players. Number 24 gets called for the carry. Kyler Tabaha gets called for the carry. Into the game for the Redskins, number 20. Mr. Begay is in there. like to see him shoot a couple three-pointers, see if he's on tonight and ready to roll. He rolls for the pass, gets it right underneath the key as we call his name, and he doesn't go for three. He makes the two look easy with a nice left-hand lay in there on the lane. Great job. 
by number 20. And Mr. Begay getting it done right there. Nice move there by number 30. Gets around. Charlie Humphreys. I think that maybe. Let's see if that's. Looks like they are going to, I think, call that on Charlie Humphreys. I thought maybe they'd call that on Riley Green. Wasn't sure. So that would be his second foul. Fourth team foul for the Redskins. Still not in bonus or even close to that. As number 30 takes that shot, the leading scorer. Mr. Bizzardi with a nice shot just off the back of the rim. Into the game comes number 22 for the Pirates. Makai Yazi, the 5'10 junior. Out of the game goes number 10. That's Shane Phillips. He is the 5'7 senior. Guess what Shane Phillips' nickname is? Number 10. He's 5'7. They call him Baby Shark. <laughs> Baby Shark. You know that song, Baby Shark? Well, my cousin would love to hear that. Right? He's Your two. cousin's got to be two or three if he, if he loves Baby Shark, right? He's two. Yep. Very, very cool name. Very cool nickname, Baby Shark. So anyway, number 22, bring it up for the Pirates. He's on a one on two. Let's see if they're going to call the foul. Ooh. Going to call a blocking foul on Jordan Mannery. He didn't get the charge call he was looking for, so that's a 15 foul on the Redskins, and number 22 goes the line because he was shooting. So we're going to see if Makai Yazi can total what he's made for the season. He averages four points a game. If he can get both these right here, he'll be above his average. So first shot comes in just off the front of the rim. Not a lot of arch. like to see him bend his legs a little more. That's one of the keys to shooting foul shots is the lower body. you got to get your legs up underneath the shot to be consistent. So here goes his second chance. Six-point lead for the Pirates. He's looking to give him seven. Gets it up a little too much on that one. Nice rebound right there by Riley Green, number 22. Gets the ball away. Kicks it over to Charlie Humphreys. The 6'2 senior brings it up the court and gets it stolen by number 24, Kyler Tabaha. Up the court to number 22. Off the glass goes Jordan Mannery. Ball misses. And back to the skins. Bring it the other way with Asher Rabin out there on the three-point line. Turns his back to the basket, gets it to Jordan Mannery, who's looking for that screen right there off Asher Rabin. And it looks like a man zone is what you've got from the Valley Pirates right here right now. As they come out, that's going to leave somebody open if, if the Redskins rotate underneath. Get some movement, rotate underneath, and you can get that man zone a little bit off. Riley Green's going to get draw a foul on number 40. That's Edmund Whitehorse. He's a six-foot senior, tallest player on the Valley Pirates team. He gets called on the foul for Riley Green. So that's three team fouls. First foul for number 40, Edmund Whitehorse, as Riley Green, number 22, goes to the line. He is a six-foot-five senior for the Skins with the ball just coming short off the front of the rim. Jordan Winters is going to come back into the game for Charlie Humphreys and take that spot right there between the two Valley Pirates. So Riley Green looking to get St. John's into the double digits here. Nice shot right over the front of the rim. Gets the basket. So Redskins 10, Valley Pirates 15. Number 32 goes out of the game, Michael James. And into the game comes number 12, Joshua Begay for the Valley Pirates right here. So with 6.30 to go here in the second period, Valley Pirates doing a great job driving up and inside. Doing a lot of good dishing. A lot of good driving, a lot of nice movement on the perimeter. So let's see what St. John's can do with that turnover as they get the ball. Nice movement right there by Jordan Manners. He goes underneath. And Riley Green with a good rebound, but a good stuff right there. And there it comes. They're going to call that travel on Jordan Winters as he tries to drive the lane and go up underneath. That and one called by Mr. Brian Lang. Brian Lang calling that one. Saying you just can't take three steps, right? Yeah. Back into the game comes number 23. That's Hunter Jarvis, the 6'4", senior for the Redskins. He's going to be asked to be play man-to-man -man on number 12 out there, Joshua Begay, who is their lead scorer. And a nice, nice drive there by number 30. Ball comes off the back of the rim as Jordan Mannery looking to bring it up the court. Loses it there for a second. And Asher Rabin going to be called for travel as he was going to get stuffed right there by the flying pirate. He was trying to get to the three, but he didn't shoot it, so therefore that is a travel. Right? Nice hustle right there by the Pirates to get that, almost get that block. Coach Patrick Boone, the head coach for the Valley Pirates. I don't think we've mentioned him yet tonight, but head coach Patrick Boone 
you can hear him down there calling for a screen. He wants movement off the ball. That's how you get open. You have to have movement away from the ball. you got to set screens away from the ball and get open and move and get those passing lanes opened up. So that's what he's wanting tonight. I talked to assistant coach Marcus Forrester for the Pirates tonight. Known him forever. Great guy. Good friend. Asked him about their team. He said they're very young, just kind of like the Redskins. They do have quite a few seniors on the team, but they're young seniors. This is the first year they've started, first year that they've had that, that role where you got to play day in and day out, night after night. So nice shot off the backboard right there by number 23. Hunter Jarvis, the 6'4 senior, making it happen. Oh, you'd like to see him take that up and score right there. Number 32, Michael James, the 5'11 senior. He had an open look and just cried. So Valley Pirates looks like they're going to call a timeout. Coach seconds. Patrick Boone wants to talk to him. It's a 30 second. He's seeing something. He's That lead's been cut to three points. 15 for the Pirates, 12 for the Redskins. And so that lead is almost, almost a double digit lead early on, eight to zero. Now it's been cut to three with that right there. So he calls a timeout. Looking it over. St. John's is getting back into this game. But they've worked it in there, had some nice rebounds. They've had some nice hustles, some nice steals. So, But like Marcus Forrester, the assistant coaches tell me, they've got a very young team like St. John's does. They really don't have a lot of returning varsity starters, just like the Redskins. And so they're trying to get their feel. They're trying to understand their roles, who their captains are, and who's going to make things happen. You can see Jordan Manner is doing a great job. He's taking over at that point guard spot. He's really hustling. He's really working hard. Yeah, but this has uh, been tough year for St. John's coach, Russ, Rusty Oaks, leaving, and, and like players like Preston Wilson, who we like to call him, the Matrix. The Matrix. <laughs> yeah, you know, Coach Oaks isn't here this year. The Matrix is gone. Big Brady Overson. Um, a lot of those great players just aren't here, and so they're just having a rebuilding year and trying to figure out, you know, how to win, what defenses to run, what works best for their personnel set. Nice three-point shot right there by number 30. Trajan Bazzardi puts it down and from that right wing. And Trajan Bazzardi is their second most scoring. He alongside is. Alongside number 12, Joshua Begay. You got it, brother. Nice way to draw the foul there by number 21, Jordan Mannery. It's going to be on the floor. So that's going to be the fourth, I believe, the fourth team foul for the Pirates. 32 with the push. And that's going to be on number 32. That's Michael James. That is his first foul of the night as number 40 comes in for him, Edmund Whitehorse. So taking it out on the floor. Jordan Winters back over to Mannery. Mannery's looking up underneath, back to Winters. Mannery cuts. Nothing there. Sanders doing a good job of cutting off those passing lanes, those shooting lanes. So inside to Hunter Jarvis. He's got a nice height advantage. Ball is in and out as it can go. And Jordan Winters with a nice rebound puts it in. St. John's 14. And it looks like going to be a four-point game as that foul gets called right there. Let's see who this is on. We're talking 2-1. Yeah, we're talking 2-1. So that's Jordan Mannery. That's his second foul of the game. St. John's has 16 fouls. So the next foul is going to put Sanders into the bonus. So St. John's is... Got to be careful on these next couple fouls with about 3.35 to go here in the second period. They don't reset your fouls. And nice drive right there again by number 30. Gets a good piece of it by Hunter Jarvis to deflect that. Keep that ball from going in. It looks like number 5 and number 15, Afton Cox and Mr. Manier are going to be coming in for the Redskins here as we start. That's going to be called a foul on number 40. That's Edmund Whitehorse for Sanders. Jordan Mannery, number 21, going to the line. That's going to be the second foul on Edmund Whitehorse. He had one in the first period, and he picks up one in the second period. So Jordan Manor with a chance to cut the lead to within two points if he can hit both of these free throws right here. He's looking a lot better as a point guard. He's in much better shape. Uh, he's got better command of the ball, the offense, the floor. Really starting to mature well as a point guard out there. Really proud of how Jordan Manor has been working and maturing. Good to see him get that going. So Afton Cox into the game right there, number five. The six-foot senior for the Skins. That one misses off the rim just slightly. You know, that really hurts on those foul shots, Kel. Mm -hmm. or, or what we just call free throws. So St. John's 
Looks like they're again going. They're going to stay in that man. St. John's in the man defense. Valley Pirates looking to slash right in the middle. Nice job by Afton Cox, number five. 12 with um, legal contact or something. Yeah, so he gets called for the charge. So he, he picks up his first foul. That's Joshua Begay. His first foul of the game. Both teams have six points at number 15 into the game now. Meneer's in the game. Nice pass back over number 24. Just a little bit short off the front there for D'Angelo Spencer. So Valley's going to take it out with 2.44 to go here in the second period. Six fouls apiece. St. John's looking to put pressure on that ball as it's coming up the court. Sanders a super, not a super big team. I mean, they only have one player that goes six foot, but they're very fast, they're very athletic, and they're doing a good job handling the ball and passing the ball tonight. Again with the drive by number 30. Doing a good job, just a little bit low on the pass. A little bit low on the pass, gets his own ball back, and he got three people standing on the left side, and that's a nice deflection right there. Nice deflection to keep the ball out. And Jordan Winters looking to take that left baseline. Comes up and underneath with a nice little roll over the basket. St. John's within two points with 2.09 to go here in the second period. Sanders looking to push it up the floor. When these two teams played in that Blue Ridge tournament a couple days ago, about a week ago actually, a uh, very tight game. I talked to Coach Wade about it. St. John's ended up winning, I think, by five, by four or five points. But it was a great game. Are Just like what you're seeing tonight. Real close, good evenly matched teams. Are you talking about the last game? Yeah, the, the St. John's played Sanders in the Blue Ridge tournament. And they actually, St. John's actually came away victorious by five points, but it was a great game. I was talking to coach, head coach, Stacy Wade of the Redskins about it earlier. Nice drive right there, just a little high and hard off the backboard. Bring it up, number 24, nice pass up to number 22, Makayazi with another basket. Bringing up the floor for the Redskins, number 24, D'Angelo Spencer. Gets it back over to Maneer. Maneer looking to see who's up and underneath. St. John's rotating back from the top. And you'd like to see a little more movement and rotation down there on the bottom for the Redskins. Trying to open up those shooting lanes. Hunter Jarvis wide open in the lane. And just off the backboard. Poked out of bounds by... Trajan, so Redskins are going to get the ball back. Jordan Winters taking it out. Number three coming in the game, Charlie Humphreys for the Redskins. Also coming in the game for the Pirates, number two, Hayden Etsidi. Got a box inbounds play here. Winters sets the screen up top back to Maneer, who takes down the baseline. Nice little move up and over the top by number 15, Maneer. St. John's within two. Under a minute to go here in the second period. Pirates looking to score, not going to want to run the clock down. They're going to want to get a score, see if they can get at least two possessions out of this before they go into the locker room. Looking for that nice shot. St. John's doing a good job on that man. Rotation screens. Guys picking up their screens. Coach asking for a five-second call, but there's no one close enough on him to make the call, so doesn't get it. Nice fade back out by number 24, just a little bit. Off the back of that rim right there by Kyler Tabaha as Maneer brings it up the floor. Over to Humphreys. Humphreys looking to take it on the left-hand side, and St. John's ties the game with 15 seconds to go. Sanders bringing it back up. They're looking for one possession with under 10 seconds to go right here. Trajan with the ball up top. Looks at the clock, sees it's four seconds. Going to take a downtown long three. Comes off the back of the rim, and we go into halftime. Tied 20-20. Very evenly matched game. 20-20. Each team had six fouls. A lot of even scoring down the way as the Redskin flag being run up and down the floor right there by a little fan. Assistant coach Marcus Forrester taking the Pirates off the team. Coach Waite takes the Redskins off the team. And that team takes them off the floor into the locker room. Going to see what they can do to try to pull out the lead here. we got about 10 minutes for halftime. Let me give you some stats here real quick on the Skins, and then the Pirates. Hunter Jarvis has two points. A lot of even scoring here, as you can see, Kel. Um, Hunter Jarvis with two points. Afton Cox with two points. Jordan Winters with four points. And then you've also got Jordan Manry with four points. Those are your two leading scorers for St. John's. Jordan Winters with two, with four. Jordan Manry with four. And then Asher Rabin had that nice three-pointer when he came in off the bench. Riley Green hit a free throw, so he's got a point. 
And then Meniere's got two, and Charlie Humphreys has two. So that rounds out all the scoring for St. John's. That gives you 20 points. And then with the 20 points for the Pirates, it's much more condensed. Kyler Tabaha has two. Makai Yazi with five points. Joshua Begay has four points. And Trajan Bazzardi, of course, the leading, being the leading scorer right now for the Pirates, he has nine. Generally, it's Joshua Begay, but he only has four. Trajan picking up that slack and has nine, and that gives you 20 points for the Valley Pirates. So we're going to mute for just a second, and we're going to get let you watch this nice performance from the St. John's cheer and dance team.
All right, we're back live here. Redskins taking the ball out to start this third period. St. John's Redskins versus the Valley Pirates. Tied up here 2020. Kale just went and got us a soda and some popcorn. Good man, Kale. Nice shot over the top, almost makes it. Hunter Jarvis with a beautiful rebound up underneath number 23, wearing the number of the greatest player in the history of basketball. He gets a nice bucket, and the Redskins take the lead for the first time all game. A little bit hard off the glass. Nice rebound right there by Afton Cox. He does a great job underneath on the glass. Plays way bigger than his height. Super tough, super aggressive, smart. Just a great player to have underneath, an all-around hustler. Jordan Mannery doing a great job so far tonight running the offense for the Redskins as it goes back out to D'Angelo, who's looking up underneath on this man defense. He kicks it over to Winters. Winners drawing right underneath to the Cox. What a great pass. A nice shot. Barely missed off the front of the rebound. Taken by number 24, Kyler Tabaha. Nice move right there. And a good pass up and underneath. And it gets rejected almost out of bounds by Hunter Jarvis. Nice save there by the Pirates. Looks like the Redskins are going to stay in that man-to-man. -man. They're doing a good job right there. Going to be a charging foul. And even though Afton Cox was moving, you could see the shoulder get lowered. And a lot of times you're going to pick up that call as a defensive player. Nice call there by Greg Chavis Jr. You know, Greg Chavis Jr. been officiating for forever. I mean, he looks like he's about 15, but he's been officiating for at least 15 years. Doing a great job out there calling this game tonight. So that was, was he over calling the games at the Blue Ridge Tournament as well? Did you see him over there? Yeah. Yeah, good, good official to have on the floor doing a great job tonight. You see him right there calling the five seconds on the players, seeing how long it takes, so. That was a good charging call, and you can really tell when the player wants to end your life. Right. Right. That's what he did. Oh, nice pass underneath to Afton Cox. Another shot barely missed by Afton Cox, but a good job getting that ball up and underneath. Nice drive right there. Winners with the rejection out of bounds. Jordan Winners with a nice block on number 12, Joshua Begay for the Pirates. Joshua Begay leading scorer. They set up the box. Flare out to the outside, going to push it around. And a nice screen there by number 40 for the Pirates. Edmund Whitehorse doesn't result in any points, but the pass over does. And that's number 24, Kyler Tabaha, with nice scoring right there. Number 24 putting it down for the Pirates. Tied back up 22-22 with 5.53 to go here in the third period. All the fouls are reset. You did see the one foul by the Pirates, so one team foul for them, none by the Redskins. They both went in at halftime with six team fouls. Nobody got in the bonus. Good pickup right there by Edmund Whitehorse as he kicks it back over to number 24. And let's see if he takes the shot down low. He does not. Gets it back in. Nice, clean, open look right there for number 12. Joshua Begay, leading scorer for the Pirates, puts it down from three points out. So picks up the tray. Pirates back up by three. Jordan Mannery takes it down the left side. Beautiful move by Jordan Mannery. Really coming alive. He just Every game he's getting better. He took that left-handed. Not his dominant hand, but you couldn't tell. Right down the left side. Beautiful roll over the front and score. So Redskins back within one. That zone man going down here for the skins. Beautiful drive right there. Joshua Begay, a little high off the front, but a great rebound by Edmund Whitehorse. Putting it back in there. Great scoop and pick up. Pirates go back up by three. Jordan Mannery on the left side, through the legs, through the legs again, takes it back left, and I've got to see that fall right there. Number 24, D'Angelo Spencer ties it back up again. 27, beautiful shot, nothing but net. Redskins back in that defense. Looks like they're going to stick with a sag man right here. Smart. From the looks of it, St. John's is just playing smart defense, but the three. Almost in for number 30. Trejon. Running a bit of a motion offense. Oh, I like that. And I like that idea inside. And a blocking so that's on five. So that's going to be the first team foul for the Redskin. That's the first foul on Afton Cox. He's had a good, clean game so far. Doing a great job down there banging bodies, but first foul for him, first foul for the Redskins, one and one. Man, we sure have an even game, Kill. Mm -hmm. One team foul for both teams. We've got 27 up came out at halftime 20 up 16 fouls for both to end the half and it's a nice put over the front there by Edmund Whitehorse Riley Green comes into the game number 23 going out number four coming into the game right there for the Redskins that's Asher Rabin he had that nice three-pointer off the bench so going big and small coach Stacy Waite substituting in 
now a two-point game. Two-point game here. Jordan Mannery with the right, goes to the left, crosses over, goes up underneath. Oh, my goodness, that's a nice drive. Almost scores in Riley Green. The 6'5 senior. Riley Green. One, I, one of the few guys who could look my dad in the eye. Right. Check this out. I asked Riley Green before the game. We were out in the hall. I was talking to him. I said, Riley, what's your favorite color? And he said, green. I laughed. I said, seriously, what's your favorite color? He goes, no, I'm, it's really, it's green. I said, green with an ear, without a, he laughed. He goes, no, it's, it's really my favorite color. So favorite color, Riley Green, oddly enough, is green. You probably have never guessed that if I asked you three times, but good to see him score out there with that nice rebound. So tied up 29-29, 3.49 to go here in the third period as Valley takes it out. The Pirates with that kickback to number 12, Joshua Begay looking for the three-pointer. Good defense right there by number four. Getting out there on Asher Raven moving in. It's a good step right there. Good step by Tejan Bazardi to come around that left side. He got that step and leaned in and put the Pirates back up by two, 31-29. Nice clean game here. So Asher looking underneath. Riley Green rotates back to the three-point line. And with that with that uh, throw right there, Coach Stacy Waite, he calls a timeout. Looks like that's a full timeout. Is that what you saw right there? Yep, looked like a full. So full timeout by the Redskins. Coach Waite bringing him in, 3.18 to go. We're over halfway through this third period. It went by real quick on that one. Kel's got popcorn in his mouth, but he's got something to say. <laughs> I just want to say it. back to my comments. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hear it, man. You're eating on the job. Let's hear it. I'm at a wedding reception in the Valley, like, I don't know how long ago it was. Right. When did ASU play Washington? <laughs> Whatever that oh, was. Oh, that's like 10 days Radding. ago. Well. Wasn't it? Um, it was like a month or two ago, but we're at wedding reception yeah, in the that Valley. Yeah, that was before Christmas. You're yeah. right. That's at least two and weeks then, ago. And then my dad's talking to a guy, and guy, and my dad looks like a midget compared to him. Oh, no way. That guy's name was Chandon Herring. Chandon Herring, right? A great St. John's alum. And a he made my dad look one foot tall. A great football player for St. John's playing in the NFL right now. Good to see him doing so well. A lot of St. John's alum going on in, in the football world. Not as many going on in the basketball world. We've had a few that definitely could have played college basketball that for one reason or another uh, didn't, but yeah, definitely some great football players continue to come out of St. John's. Big tribute to Coach Mike Morgan, who actually retired this year. The winningest coach in the history of the state of Arizona, Coach Mike Morgan. And oddly enough, we have the best basketball coach in the history of the state of Arizona, Coach Verl Heap. So some great winning traditions here in St. John's. Nice move right there by Mr. Begay. Just comes off the foot, and Riley Green with a good... Takeaway, Asher Rabin in a one-on-five. Gives it to Riley Green. Takes a nice shot up over the front of the rim. Oh, Jordan Mannery almost with the basket. Nice push back up there to Mr. Begay. Foul is going to be called on Asher Rabin with the push. Smart foul on the floor. Doesn't let him score. Going to make him earn it at the line. That's going to be the second foul on Asher Rabin. Third team foul with 2.47 to go here in the third period. Number 12, Joshua Begay, the 5'10 junior, leads this team in scoring. Love the pink shoes, and he's going to hit this one off the front. Nice form, nice shot. Great job right there. If he hits this one, you're going to see the Pirates go up. It's going to be by four. A couple buckets right here. So he shoots. Left-hander, of course, as, as you can see. Left-hander in his right brain. That's why he's leading the score. Oh, and we talk about him, and he gets a steal. Afton Cox with the speed down the sideline tries to make the steal. Going to get called for the foul. Going to make him earn it again off the line. Pirates up by four. And number 12, Joshua Begay will get two shots. So if he gets this, he's going to score four points in three seconds. Hit those two. No time off the clock. Got the steal three seconds off. And if he hits these two... That's four points in three seconds. That's not a bad average right there. Ooh, little tired. Doesn't quite use his legs. Comes off the front of the rim. Into the game for the Pirates comes number 10. That's Shea Phillips. Baby Shark, as they call him. Baby Shark in. And number three, Charlie Humphreys into the game for the Skins, taking that low block right there next to Baby Shark. So you got Charlie Humphreys, 6'2", next to Baby Shark, 5'7". 
And that shot up over the front of the rim, he gets the roll. So three for four on the line right there for Joshua Begay. Valley up by five as Asher Raven brings it up the floor, trying to get around that, that tight defense right there. And that weave being called for by Coach Stacy Waite. Maneer into the game as well, kicks it back over to Cox. Cox looking underneath for Riley Green, Riley Green not rotating off that player. Now he comes around. Good defense right there by number 32, Michael James for the Pirates. Looks like Val Sanders is going in a man press. Nice fake right there by Humphreys as he gets it back to Maneer. Over into Green. Green thought he was going to shoot, didn't realize it was a pass. That was a nice idea by Maneer, a good pass underneath. And Riley Green looking for the rebound, just a little miscommunication. So that turnover gets us down to almost two minutes to go here in this third period. Valley up by five points, and that's a nice three-point shot right there by number 10, just off the rim by Baby Shark, Shane Phillips with a good shot. Maneer coming on the outside. He doesn't try to pass it this time. He says, I'm just going to score, and he does. He goes up over the top on that right side, beautiful off the glass. St. John's back to within three with a minute 42 to go here in the third period, bringing it up the floor for the Pirates. Trajan Bajarde. Oh, nice shot right there by Mr. Begay up and over the front. Joshua Begay off the front of the rim, Kel. Pirates take it back up to a five-point lead with less than a minute 30 to go here in this third period. It's going to call that travel. We talked about that earlier. The ball's got to hit the floor before the foot does. Otherwise, you're taking that extra step, and they're going to call it every time. So the Pirates have scored 16 points in this third period. We've still got a minute 15 to go. Another basket by Joshua Begay, the 5'10 junior, making it look easy out there tonight. Mm -hmm. Almost, almost the biggest lead of the game for the Pirates. Their biggest lead was eight. They're up by seven right now, up underneath the Afton Cox. Pirates jump in on that. Looks like it's going to end up being a jump ball call, I would imagine. Oh, smart call by Coach Stacy Waite. I think he called it, what, a 30-second? Full. Oh, he called a full. Full timeout. Coach Stacy Waite going to be right there on the floor. Good call. His player had possession. So St. John's going to get the ball when they come out of this timeout. Less than a minute to go in the third period. St. John's has four team fouls. The Pirates have just one. They're doing a good job of playing a clean game down here. Uh, Afton Cox had that last foul, but nobody, nobody's in the bonus right here. So as Coach Stacy Waite takes him over there, I want to give you a little information on the Redskins. They've been working hard this year, like you said, Kale. They've been improving quite a bit. Uh, they had a win against Alchese, like I said, in the round ball tournament. They also had that close win against Sanders in the Blue Ridge tournament that you were at, and that that's their wins. Uh, they're looking for their first win in region, if you will, their first regular season win. And Valley Sanders, um, they did have a win, regular season win. They beat the St. Michael's Cardinals 58-51. to and that win was on December 18th. And then they went to that Timber Mesa White Mountain Classic. I was talking to their assistant coach, Marcus Forrester, and he was telling me that they had they played for fifth place. They had that three-point bucket right at the end, and the ref waved it off, or they would have got uh, on the podium, so to speak. But a tough loss for them. But they did have some good wins in that Blue Ridge tournament to go along with their win against St. Michael's during the regular season. So as the Redskins take the floor, Maneer taking it out. You've got Green, Cox, Rabin, and Humphreys in the game right now for the Skins. Almost lost it, but Maneer picked it up. Nice move on the baseline right there. Great move by number 15, Maneer, as he gets around on the baseline. Draws that foul. That's going to be the second team foul for the Pirates, of course. That's the first foul on number 10, Baby Shark, Shane Phillips. Love the nickname, Baby Shark. Afton Cox almost over the front of the rim. Doesn't quite get it. Pirates pick that ball up. And as the Redskins come down looking for their man, they're going to that man-to-man -man defense. It's been working well for them. Sanders has scored 18 points in this period. You recall, Kel, they scored 20 points in the first half. Sanders has almost reached that output in this period. And if he scores right here, yep. So Sanders gets 20 points in the third period so far. They only had 20 points in the first half. So they're doing a great job of breaking the defense and getting some nice looks and some nice land against the Redskins in this third period, making some nice adjustments in the locker room during that halftime. And Asher Rabin driving, goes up over the front, almost gets it in over the front, draws the foul. That's going to be the third team foul on the Pirates. That's going to be the second foul for Michael James as Asher Rabin goes to the line, hoping to cut this lead if he can to seven points for the Redskins right here as he's going to get two shots.
Nice shot right there. Good rotation on the ball. Just comes off the right a little bit and pops out. He's got his good luck headband on, so I'm, I think he's going to make this second one right here. I'm thinking this one's going to go in. Oh, nice roll. The Just doesn't jinx. quite get it, right? So the Pirates bringing it back down. Oh, almost. And yes, it is a nice steal by Humphreys right there. He pushes it up to Asher Raven. Raven off the glass. A little bit strong. Oh, and the follow-up. Boom! The follow-up with no time on the clock by Afton Cox. Cuts the lead seven points as we go into the fourth period. 14 fouls for the Pirates. Kel, how did you like that? That was a great play by the Redskins. They knew that the that it was the only time before the quarter end. And right. Afton Cox, I believe. A uh, great hustle right here by Humphreys. Charlie Humphreys makes a great hustle, bats the ball around, gets the steal, kicks it up top to Asher Raven. Oh. Little overshot by Asher Raven, and then you saw Afton Cox just on the hustle up in the air. Puts it up with about a half second to go, and they score. So nice hustle there by the Redskins. So for that quarter, Sanders actually scored 20 points in that quarter. The Redskins scored 13. There's your seven-point difference as we came out at halftime, tied up 20-20. Not a lot of fouls for either team. No team is in foul trouble. No player is actually in foul trouble either, so that's a positive thing. And as we get started in the fourth period, I want to say a big shout-out to Coach Stacy Waite, Coach Patrick Boone. They're doing a great job maturing these teams. Kel, I also want to give a big thank you to Judge Mike Latham for making this happen with the loft. Judge Mike Latham having the vision to get this going. And, of course, your dad's actually here tonight who keeps this thing running. And then if you look down there at the very, very end of the space shuttle, you're going to see our astronaut, Victor Chavez, our cosmonaut if we were in Russia, right? That's our man down there keeping this thing flying so we can bring in this broadcast. So a huge thank you to Judge Mike Latham and staff for everything that they're doing. So with that foul, let me give you an update real quick. Hunter Jarvis has four points. Afton Cox with four on that great shot at the end. Jordan Winters with four. Um, D'Angelo Spencer has three. Jordan Mannery with six to lead all scores for the Skins. Asher Raven has three. Riley Green with three. Maneer with four. And Charlie Humphreys with two as number 24. Kyler Tabaha looks to get that second shot in. And Kyler Tabaha has four points. He's got four. No. Makayazi has five. Joshua Begay is almost up to his average of 14 points. Trajan Bajardi has 11. He's way over his average. I think he's going to make this one. And he does. Bang he it. gets it. Number 24 bangs in. Edmund Whitehorse with four points. And Shane Phillips, baby shark, with two points to round it out for the Sanders Pirates. So the skin's down by nine. Just starting this fourth period with 7.40 to go here in this fourth period. Nice defense by Valley. Redskins looking to get that offense going. Nice shot there. Oh, just off the front of him. And Riley Green doesn't even jump and gets the rebound. Gets the ball back, looking again. And gets the call on the arm. Riley Green's at least 6'5", maybe 6'6". Six, six. Tallest player for Valley Sanders is like 5'11". And one of the fewest people who can look my dad in the eye. Right. So there he is. The no-jump rebound for Riley Green a couple times. Gets fouled on the arm. Nice call there. Wasn't that by Brian Lake? Is that is that who called that? But nice call there. Okay. Riley with the air ball. Can't do that on the second shot. Or it just goes right back to the Pirates. So he's got he's to use his legs. Bend his legs a little more. Use your lower body on these foul shots right here. He does that. Still comes off the right side of the rim. And the Pirates pick it up still with that nine-point lead. So, Kel... Give me the rundown on what St. John's needs to do to cut this nine-point lead. Stop Joshua Begay. I couldn't have said it better myself. My friend, stop number 12, Joshua Begay. And when they try to do that, great passes from number 30 to number 40, Edmund Whitehorse, and he scores. So now we have a double-digit lead for the Pirates. That's the biggest lead for the Sanders Pirates of this game. 11 points with six, four, uh, 653 to go here in this fourth and final period. Nice steal right there by the guy you just called out, Joshua Begay. He puts it in. Valley goes up by 13. Going to have a timeout right here by Coach Waite. And that is not how you stop Joshua Begay. My friend, that is not how you stop Joshua Begay. He came through with a nice pick. Looked like the little, little reflection of the Matrix, one of your favorite players right there. Saw it right before it happened, got to the ball, got the steal. Nice left-handed lay-in, used his body to shield 
the defender up off the glass. And so with a 13-point lead with 6.42 to go here in the fourth period, Coach Patrick Boone calls him over on the Coach Stacy Waite timeout. What do you think he's telling him? What do they got to keep doing Sanders to increase this lead or to keep the lead so they can try to win this game? Give the ball to Joshua Begay. Joshua Begay. If he gets double teamed to cut off, kick it up underneath to Edmund Whitehorse and let him go up and score. He's been he's having a good game as well. So we're going to see what St. John's has got here. Jordan Mannery bringing it back up. He's back into the game after a little bit of a rest, a much-needed rest by Jordan Mannery. He's been working hard, and with him out of the game, the Pirates are able to put up six unanswered points, which increased their lead to 13. So a seven-point lead goes to 13 on the six unanswered points, and Jordan Mannery, what a nice drive up over the front with a nice roll off the front of the rim. He cuts the lead back to 11 for St. John's. Good to see Jordan Mannery back in the game. Good to see him maturing as a point guard, taking control of the game, driving with confidence, helping his team out. So, And that's a really nice drive right there by number 30. Kel, you saw him bring the ball up so it couldn't get stolen when he went by Mannery, and he scores. So Mr. Bizzardi with another two points. And here comes Jordan Mannery again. Gets it stripped. Number 40 up to 24 for the Pirates. Kyler Tabaha kicks it back over to your man, Joshua Begay. Oh, almost bingo. Almost point taken. Asher Raven thought about taking a three-pointer. Pulls it back down, gets double teamed. Stolen by number 24, Kyler Tabaha. He's going down the right side, and Asher Raven flicks it up and out of bounds, slows the momentum down. So Pirates going to take it out on that left side. And it looks like the Pirates get the ball back per Brian Lang. And there's Whitehorse again. Draws the foul on number 22, Riley Green. Riley Green, I think that's going to be his first. That's the sixth team foul. Number six team foul for the Redskins. 35-48, Redskins down by 13. 16 fouls on the Redskins, four right now on the Pirates. As number 40, Edmund Whitehorse, the 5'11 senior, goes to the line. He's averaging about three points a game. And right now, I think he's doubled that. I think he's got six points on those two nice lay-ins in the second half. So he's having a nice game using his legs on those foul shots. See him take this right-handed shot right here. Nice spin on the ball, nothing but net. So we got a 14-point lead here for the Pirates. St. John's going out wide, trying to run a motion offense. Back to Spencer. Spencer looking underneath for Riley Green, I think. Green sets the screen. Spencer off the glass. Going to get a call right there. On number 11. The con on 12. That's your guy Joshua Begay, the 5'10 junior. Leading oh. scorer for the Pirates. So he's got two. Yeah. That's only his second foul. So we're into the fourth period. No foul trouble for him right there. Nice rotation by D'Angelo Spencer as he gets the front end of that one. Riley Green out of the game. Maneer into the game as he comes in. Danza looking to make the second one. Hoping to cut this lead to 12 points. He does that on a beautiful foul shot up over the front. So St. John's putting a little bit of pressure on the ball. Jordan Winters up. Pressure in number 30. That's Mr. Bizzardi for the Pirates. He's still got the ball looking underneath. Good movement away from the ball by the Pirates as they rotate over. And that's a great anticipation still by D'Angelo Spencer. Gets it back to Asher Rabin. Rabin coming down the right side to Maneer. Great pass underneath to Maneer. And Mannery making it look easy as he spins the ball and cuts the lead to 10 points. 39-49, Valley Sanders ahead with 4.38 to go here as Tyron. Tyjon. Tyjon. Sorry about that. Mr. Bizzardi up over and scores over the outstretched arms of two Redskins. Puts Sanders back up. 12 points right there. Jordan Winters thought about thinking. Went nice off the baseline. Left side. Drops it short off the rim and in. So back and forth. Cuts it back to 10 points. Nice move right there. Approaching the four-minute mark right here with the Redskins. Taking on the Pirates. Don't know if it was a charge, a block, or a travel, but nothing gets called. So Joshua Begay kicks it back out to number 22 who misses just slightly off the right side of the rim. He averages about four points per game. Yes, he does. There's your man, D'Angelo Spencer. Almost gets a three-point. And Jordan Mannery, the point guard, grabs the rebound up and 
Great hustle and anticipation by Jordan Mannery. Coach Wade is asking Jordan Mannery to do a lot. He plays a lot of minutes. He's in way better shape. And that's a good look and a good pass underneath to number 22, Makai Yazi, the 5'10 junior. As someone lost their man underneath the basket, he made a great rotation. That was a great pass to clear him up. Asher Rabin with a three-pointer. A little bit long off the rim, and so... Sanders going to take it back down with a 12-point lead with 3.15 to go here in the fourth period. St. John's staying in that man defense. Out on the floor right now for St. John's is Raven, Mannery, D'Angelo Spencer, and then you see Jordan Winters with almost a block and Maneer rounding it out. On the floor right now for the Pirates. And see if we're going to get a substitution. We are. Number 32 is coming in for the Pirates. That's Michael James. And number three comes in for the Redskins. That's Charlie Humphreys, the 6'2 senior. And for Sanders... Amond Whitehorse comes out and for the Redskins um, Asher Raven comes out. So they're they're both on the bench. Got some height in there for the Redskins right now. Sanders trying to kill some clock. Little clock killing, run a little weave out front. And I think they're doing a good job at that. They are, aren't they? So Sanders looking to try to get a lane, push it back out, see what they can do. And there's no shot clock. No shot clock in high school. 2.30 to go here in the fourth period. Sanders with a, yep, 12-point lead. They get it underneath to number 12, Joshua Bugay. He scores. He's up above his average right now, doing a great job of leading this team in scoring. And I thought that I just want to throw out there, then if HX is actually discussing them, whether or not to put a shot clock in. Is that right? Did not know that. That That's an interesting concept. I like it. Keeps the game moving. Keeps everything going. Um, Sanders with a 14-point lead is number 30. Takes it all the way up and in. That's Trajan. Oh, almost goes in. Spencer gets the ball back right here. Kicks it back up to Mannery. Mannery's looking to go up underneath in the middle. Kicks it back over to Winters in the corner. Humphreys calling for the ball up underneath with a nice move. A spin around fade. Almost gets it to fall. Comes off the front of the rim. And Sanders with another rebound. So with 140 to go here in the fourth period, Sanders has got a nice commanding lead of 14 points. And a correction on what I just said. The shot clock has been approved. It has been approved? Yeah. So when's that? Is that going to come into play next season? Yeah. Is I that what you're thinking? Yeah, I believe it's next season. Yeah, the, it's up to the conferences to vote it in. Hey, just so you know, we're cheating up here in the booth. We got Paul Hancock up here, one of the best officials in the state of Arizona. He's giving us the info. He says the shot clock has been approved for high school ball. It's up to each conference, each conference committee to vote it in if they want to have a shot clock. So that would be awesome. And in football, Mr. Paul Hancock also works with Mr. Brian Lang down there. Yep. Those guys are always out on the gridiron, right? Mm -hmm. So Sanders goes up by 15 points with a minute 34 to go. 41 for the Redskins, 56 for the Pirates. A 15-point lead. Nice hustle and a rebound. Kicks it over by number 32. Back out. Maneer with the ball. Goes down and it comes off Maneer on the outside. So going to go back to the Pirates with one. Yeah, it's 129. 129. 17 fouls on the skin, so they're in the bonus. It looks like the Pirates with five probably won't get into the bonus. They're not looking to foul at all with a 15-point lead here. They've done a good job with the game. Maneer out there with the foul on purpose to slow the clock down. Going to put number 22 on the line, Makai Yazi, the 5'10 junior. And, and, it, and per Scott Baker, it was a holding. Yes, for sure. So St. John's with 18 fouls right here. Eight on the board for the Redskins. Two more and they're in the double bonus. So let's see if number 22, Makai Yazi, can put that in. Oh, he gets the front end of that. Nice little roll off the front, drops down. So not what St. John's wanted with a 16 point lead. Let's see if he can get this other one. I think he's broken his average already. He averages 3.8 points per game and I. Where's, what's he at right now? Oh, my boo. He's got two with that one right there. That that one just kind of rattles in, but he does get nine it down. Nine points. So he got nine points. So Including he's almost tripled his one. average. Yeah. Nice move right there by Jordan Winters as he takes it down the left side. 
puts it in, cuts the lead to 15 points, but looks like time's probably going to run out right here for the Redskins. The foul by Jordan Winters on number 24. No. That's Kyler Tabaha, the 5'10 senior. Kel, he averages about a little over five points a game for Kyler Tabaha. So let's see how he does off the front of the line here with a 15-point lead. And like we talked about with the Redskins, with one more foul, they're going to go into that double bonus. And you don't want that. You're right. You don't want that. You want to go down in style. Style is what we're all about here in the 2A North, <laughs> two eight North region. So um, everybody's got their region schedules coming up. St. John's, uh, Sanders does. Let me give you some of St. John's teams that are going to be playing here next, Kel. They're going to play Pinon, Round Valley, Ganado, Many Farms, Ganado, Hopi, Phoenix Country Day. They're going to play Valley again on the 25th of January. In Sanders. In Sanders, right? And then they finish out the season with Gray Hills, Chinley, Round Valley, Many Farms, and Pinon. And then, of course, they go to the 2A North Tournament. So In RV. Exactly. That's going to be up there in the Dome? Yep. So the big And the Dome is actually the only dome in America specifically built for high school. Isn't that cool? It's got all those triangles in there. I won't get into the engineering of triangles, but it's an <laughs> awesome structure, right? Let's talk about Sanders for a second as we close out with 48.2 seconds to go here. And Sanders looking at the 15-point lead. Sanders had that win against St. Michael's. That was their first regular season win. They're going to pick up their second regular season win tonight. And then they play Many Farms, Gray Hills, Ganado, Pinon, Round Valley, and Hopi. Um, once that's done, they, that next night, nice job right there by Afton Cox to get it up and in. 13-point lead now for Pinon. <laughs> now for Valley Pirates. I don't think we're playing Pinon and quite yet. Pinion Pirates, wouldn't that be a great name? Nice steal right there by Charlie Humphreys as he brings it down the court, looking for that left baseline drive. Pulls up a little bit long. And now Pirates pick it up on a 4-2. They pull back up smartly, just trying to get the ball off. And that falls going to be called right there. Great sportsmanship by the oh, Redskins. So is he calling that, in, I think he's calling that an intentional. Looks like 3-1. Yeah, it's going to be second one on Monero, number 15. So intentional, number 30 goes to the line. I don't think he meant it to be intentional, but Mr. Bizzardi goes to the line, the 5'11 senior, trying to get one more. And, and then Sanders finishes out with Round Valley, Hopi, Ganado, Blue Ridge, and Gray Hills. Mm -hmm. And then they go up to that 2A North tournament. So been a great game. Huge thank you to Judge Mike Latham, our Apache County Superior Court judge, for making this happen. A huge thank you to Caden Castleberry for being up here on this camera up top that you're getting the view from. Of course, Victor Chavez putting everything together for the girls and the boys game. Paul Hancock, not only is he an official, he is the director of Apache County Probation. He and Victor and Judge Mike Latham all had this great idea to make it happen. So a huge thank you to them so everybody can enjoy these games. And that final foul with about 10 seconds to go is going to be called again on Muneer. That's going to be his third foul. But this one's not intentional, I don't think. So that's nice. I don't know if he called the 21 he, white. He may have called the double technical right there. I don't know. You don't see that super often. But I think he called the double technical. But that's going to be five. No, it won't be. It'll be four. So it doesn't look like anyone's going to foul out. But it's going to be ten team fouls on the Redskins, six on the Pirates. This, this is one of the longest 20 seconds I've ever heard. <laughs> so. welcome, welcome to basketball, right? What's, what's the longest ten seconds of your life? It's going to be a, a, a basketball game for the most part. And so. we also like to credit um, two of our cameramen, yeah, where, where are those court. guys? Brianna Sanchez, Brianna Sanchez Josie and Josie Lynch. Oh, that is Josie Lynch. And don't forget Mr. Castleberry. Brianna Sanchez and Josie Lynch running those cameras down on the floor. So when you're getting those good views on timeout and all that, that's who's making it happen. And, of course, we have our man, Mr. Caden Castleberry up here. Mr. Caden Castleberry with the red shirt on. He's got an earphone in listening to some tunes. He's got the other earphone in listening to the broadcast. His eyes are running the camera. And that is a 30-foot three-pointer that just comes off the rim. And Afton Cox, as time expires, gives the Redskins two more points. So a 15-point win. 
for the Valley Pirates. They do a great job tonight, headed back to Sanders, Arizona. The Redskins fought hard. They had a great game. Valley and St. John scored 20 points each in the first half, and then Valley came out and put 42 points up in the second half, and then the Redskins came out and put up 27, so a higher production in the second half by both teams. But well, we finish out with Valley's mm -hmm. second regular season win of the of this year. So congratulations to them on the second yeah. win. You can tell that this St. John's team is really improving. Really improving. Let me give you some final numbers here. Hunter Jarvis with four points. Afton Cox with eight. Jordan Winters with eight. D'Angelo Spencer with four. Jordan Mannery with ten. Asher Rabin finishes with three. Riley Green with three. Maneer with four. And Charlie Humphreys with two. Going to the Valley Pirates, number 24, Kyler Tabaha had eight points. Makai Yazi with 10 points. Joshua Begay, number 12, exceeded his average, had 18 points. And Mr. Bizzardi, Trajan Bizzardi, had a great game with 17 points. Edmund Whitehorse working hard underneath with seven. And Baby Shark, number 10, Shane Phillips, finishes with two points on the night for the Valley Pirates. So, again, thank you to everybody that made this production happen. Paul Hancock, Victor Chavez, Caden Castleberry up here top with us. And, of course, Kel, thanks for being here. And finally, a huge thanks to Judge Mike Latham for buying all this equipment, having the vision, putting it together. It's always fun to be here and have these productions. Good luck to the Valley Pirates as they continue on with their season, and best of luck to the St. John's Redskins as they keep improving and looking to take that record and get a few more wins here over the next few weeks. So with that, we're going to check off. Again, everybody drive safe, getting home, be careful, and God bless. And see you, Jan.